three, two, one. It's launch day. set up over there. I mean, why not fly off a of sand dune? It's Thanksgiving and it's like 65 degrees out here. I feel like a little kid out here in a giant ass sandbox. These cute little mouse tracks. I have no idea what those are. My guess is a lizard. You know what? I'm sure it's like a beetle or something. Well, no, that's a lizard. You can see where the tail slid, you know, where the tail would drag behind. Yeah, that's a lizard. Yeah, this channel is supposed to be about rockets, but I guess it's going to be about, you know, mice and lizard tracks. That's a pretty cool shot. We're just about ready to go. Um, you probably can't see my head, huh? Okay. It's actually really nice right here. So. We're just about ready to go. This is the motor. Um, it's completely assembled. We just have to install it in the rocket. Um, the grains didn't turn out nearly as good as I thought. Um, their densities are pretty low. Uh, I think it's because as the acetone evaporates off, it'll actually create little bubbles and voids in the propellant as it evaporates off. Um, they did eventually all, all the acetone evaporated off. They're pretty solid but they don't weigh a whole lot. Um, so I have no idea what's gonna happen. Uh, it could blow up on the pad. Um, I'm running this motor really conservative. Um, so, I mean, it should only be hitting 400 PSI if the grains were, you know, really good. Um, so it's gonna do more than that. Yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen. Either either you guys are gonna see a pretty cool explosion, I think, or it's gonna work. Really, I, I really want this to work. I mean, it'd be pretty sweet to be able to make rocket motors out of recycled styrofoam. Oh! Uh, this is the world first, at least that I'm aware of, um, recycled styrofoam powered rocket. Um, so, maybe there's a reason nobody else has done this before, or maybe I stumbled upon something kind of cool. Surprising amount of bugs out here. Okay, guys, let's do this. <laughs> hey, everybody farts. Get over it. Normally, it's not how you want to load a rocket, but. I made this tower last night, so get at me. set up. <laughs> okay, we're going in five, four, three, two, one. Whoa! Two, one. Whoa. 
Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> oh. Holy shit, that's part of the case. My thought was all the little bubbles from the acetone evaporating off would at least be consistent. That overpressurized even before the uh, snap rings could get out of the way. So we're already, now we're finally, you know, within like 10 feet of the pad. <laughs> oh my God. I think there's there's the the most the majority of the rocket there's part of the tower like holy it bent oh wow there's one of the snap rings right there you can see pieces of nozzle just blown everywhere like there's a piece right there oh look at this this is a one inch aluminum rail. Oh my God, look at, it destroyed it. <laughs> not even, not even kind of straight anymore. Well, I mean shit, that's how you learn, right? Trial and error. Dang, it's gonna take me a while to clean up. I just see pieces scattered everywhere. I don't even know where the fins are. Like, I haven't seen a single piece of fin. Just little pieces everywhere. Holy shit. Oh yeah, there's the ejection charge. I bet it destroyed my electronics too. Oh hey! I think my electronics might be okay. Oh wait, nope. Uh, oh no, I, yeah, I don't think my electronics are good anymore. The capacitor just fell out. The battery's completely gone. Well, I uh, found the battery. Okay, this is so cool. So this was the forward end of the motor. The O-ring seated in that groove there. And that's like an eighth of aluminum and the pressure just sheared you can see where it just sheared the o-ring groove oh man oh now we're finding now we're finding some bits of fins apparently they flew a bit farther here's another piece okay this is just like eighth plywood and it managed to fly from all the way over there. I mean, that's a good, I mean, that's at least 200 feet. Oh my God, I've never, I've never had that bad of a Kato before. Like that was even, <laughs> that was not even close to working. That wasn't even a rocket for like a quarter of a second. It just blew up. I think dissolving the styrofoam and acetone is not the way to go. Maybe there's some other way with like heat or pressure that maybe you could, almost melt the styrofoam. I'm not sure. Um, if you guys have any ideas, let me know. Uh, for now though, I think I'm definitely gonna put the uh, styrofoam idea on hold. <laughs> you know, it was worth a shot, you know, at least, you know, it at least merited one test, I think. Um, in theory, it should work and it burns fine in the open air, but as soon as you put it in a pressure vessel, those tiny little voids in the propellant, I mean, it's just, no, it's just gonna blow up instantly. Um, and maybe if you ran it conservative enough, you could at least get it down. Um, but I mean, that was only running a can of about 250, and that was a pretty tame, well, it should have been a tame propellant had it not been for the voids. So, yeah. 
Ooh, nice little pano. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Now we're looking legit. 